Well, welcome back everybody to this week's video. This is my new project, Project Coyote. It is a 1975 Honda XL 125 frame. A few parts here and there, but the secret sauce is an engine out of a 1988 Honda TRX 200SX. So we're gonna have automatic clutch, electric start, five speeds, thumb throttle, reverse, all the good stuff, just like a Goldwing. So let's rewind a few days and we'll see where this all started. I just had an idea. I drilled some holes in the corner of my Harbor Freight lift table. Put some tie straps down. Just look at it. What a nice motorcycle lift. This is so much nicer than having to work on the ground. I think now is about the time to get all this wiring and all this stuff out of here before I start chopping and welding. There we all go with this. I'm not going to be using the stock air box since I need to put a little bit larger battery battery in here for the starter motor. So I'll save this for somebody else who wants it. That's rusty. Yeah, not too bad shape, that'll clean up nice. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little preliminary lining up of the sprockets. Got a piece of pretty heavy duty angle iron. My thoughts are, I'm going to slide this in like this, and lay that edge of the angle iron along the front and rear sprocket, and clamp front sprocket nice and tight. Not nice and tight. Nice and tight there. And we'll clamp it to the back. And that will kind of let me know which direction, left or right, I need to put the... Pretty good. I've also got a little piece of cardboard in between the frame and the engine to kind of act as a little bit of a shim when I'm making my motor mounts. So I've got a little bit of clearance between the crankcase and the frame. That's a good start. Okay, so here's the plan. I've got this rod. And I'm going to insert it into the original motor mount part of the frame. I'm gonna heat this up and bend this 90 degrees. So I have a rod coming down like this. And now you kind of use it as a compass to cut a radius like that there. And then I'll move down to this point here. Adjust the compass and make it right there. And that X, if I do this from both sides, that should square that hole and that hole up to there and there. And then I can take a little piece of pipe like this, run it through there, weld it on, and that should be identical to those. And at that point, yeah, I'm just cutting out some metal and this will work. Okay, this is how I'm going to make my new motor mounts. I made this little compass. Just a piece of conduit with a little tiny point and ground in right here. Drilled a hole, that's gone. Drilled a hole, threaded this quarter inch bolt. So my thoughts are, I've got this rod. I'll be able to slide this in and out wherever I want. Thread this thing in. If I tap my hole right. Yep. Tighten that on one spot. Scratch a line on the frame. Flip it over to the other side of the frame. Scratch it. You know, better if I just show you over on the bike. So the upper part of the mount on the motor is up here. So what I'm gonna do is do something similar to how the, mo the mounts were here and here on the frame. So I need to make 
a squared hole here and here on both sides and they got to be aligned so my thoughts this guy put in here and I kind of line this up where I want this about let's say I want the hole to be right about there get a little scratchy scratchy line right there let's tighten this down so it doesn't move and let's just scratch this arc from this point over here on this side kind of like this if you can see it that line right there move this from here flip it on this side and we'll scratch our line over here so now from this point I'll move down here to this one and I'll make an arc this direction and it should make a little X marks the spot come on get through there I know you're tight, but not that tight. What's going on here? How about this spot? Perfect. All right, so our line from up there is there. I'm gonna try to center this somewhat in the middle of the frame. About there. Tighten him down good. Should be able to scratch a line over there. Move around to this side. Do the same thing over here. Perfect. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Here is my X here on this side. And over here. So if I drill there and drill from this side, everything should be squared to this hole and this hole. And then I'll make another one up here and then one down there. We should be able to use the stock hole right there for that bottom mount. And we should have a squared up engine. All right. Pilot holes in here. And now for a couple half inch holes. Probably could have piloted that a little bit better. Oh well. So I've got my squared up hole over there and over here. So I've got this tubing. I'm going to slide through here and hopefully. Ooh, let me tight. It should go in there. Yes, it will. Cool. So my thoughts are. I will cut that off there and here, and I'll weld this tubing into the frame so it pretty much mimics what Honda had going on up there. Yeah, that's gonna work great. Yep, so now I'll need one above the motor mount on the engine itself. And then I'll make a triangle out of some thick steel, bolt, bolt, bolt. That takes care of the upper rear. Do the same thing down there. We're gonna be good to go. 14 and eighth. Oh wow, that's right on the money. Let's truck them down here. Wow, very nice. Right on the money. Could be, couldn't be closer. Well, it could be, but we're gonna have a square engine. Nice. 
And I'm so glad I bought this extra, this extra case. This is a lot easier than having to lift the whole motor in there. Center of the frame is about there. That should be good. There we go. Two down, one to go. I just realized something. I'm not going to have a foot, foot brake light on this guy. Or a return spring, because that is going to be all in the way. I'm going to chop that off. All right, so I got a bunch of parts in. Mainly, I got a 520 sprocket that should fit on the back here to match up with the 520 that's on the Fat Cat or the TRX engine. So I think what I'm gonna do, let's pull this off, pop this new sprocket on, see if we can get that chain lined up and figure out where I want this motor side to side. Well, check it out. About a month later, I can continue this video. Machine Shop did a heck of a job boring and honing this thing. So I'm gonna mask off the mating surfaces, paint it black. We're in business. Let's start putting this motor back together. Ugh, she's not 
quite fitting. What am I, what am I hitting on here? Oh, I see. Ooh, it's almost like this motor's too big for this frame. Oh. What I got going on is the crankcase breather is kind of hitting on this right here. That's kind of a problem. Yeah, I could probably take the cutoff wheel and Paul Jr. this right here. That should be just fine. Okay, so that thick flange basically just held on the coil. Just gotta take that slightest little bit off right here. Yeah, I'll have to grind that and weld that again. Yeah, this will be okay. Not great, but okay. There, we are in. Whew, she's tight. All right, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get the chain on here, and then that'll kind of give me a rough idea of where I need to put the engine left to right. Oh, Leave the darn thing in gear. I left it in gear, and the gear shifter is like, not here. Ah. Okay, so I've got the engine sitting in here. I've got it kind of shimmed here and there with a couple of these guys. Got the chain on. Clears the swing arm really nice. No weird noises to think of. It's not binding up, so everything seems to be lined up good enough for an off-road bike. I think what I'm gonna do is tackle this top mount first. So I'll probably need to grab my compass again and drill a hole through here, put one of those pipes through there. And when that's done, I'll be able to cut a triangle on both sides of this for my top motor mounts. But the problem I'm having here, is you can kind of see the mount on the 200SX, they are, that thing's about six inches wide, and that's only about two and a half inches wide. So my thoughts, I'm gonna take this top mount off the engine and I'm going to cut, cut it down to size. So a couple plates will just right there. Scratch our line on that side. Move over to the other side. Same thing over here. All right, now let's go off this front motor mount. Mark the spot on that side. And X marks the spot on that side. All right, bead of weld. Cut this bead of weld. We're rocking and rolling. Ah! 
That should work just fine. So now I got my cardboard template. Kind of just need to how to have that like that, right? Yes. Like, nope. Like this. And I'll punch the bolts through there. Get my template, and we'll go cut it out of steel. We'll have ourselves a motor mount. Okay, let's see how things work. Tolerances might be a little bit too tight. We'll see. Yeah, that one's not bad. Now let's see how our compass works. Oh, backwards. Oh, backwards again. the heck's going on here? That's right. Heck yeah. Oh, that's tight. Backwards. That way. Wow. Holy cow, that's the real deal. Okay, so I don't get my left and right mixed up. We'll take the fancy dancy little punches and we'll make a, some numbering and lettering on this thing. Left outside, so we'll put an L and an O on here. There. Okay, so the top mount is in, engine's all squared up. Chain feels and sounds great. Now the front mount. And these are the original mounts up to 200 SX. I should be able to chop this down, drill, drill. On the other side's gonna be a little bit more of a trick. I'm gonna have to bend that bracket a little bit with some heat, bend it in, and then bend it back to make that fit, because this guy's kinda hanging out way out in no man's land right now. I don't wanna have a couple pieces of pipe just sitting there like that. I think that might look kinda gaudy. Okay, let's see how close we guessed here. 
Are you kidding me? Wow, that's right on the money. Might be a couple degrees off, but I think once I impact gun some bolts on there, that should work perfectly. Yeah, I'll be darned. Okay, now let's see how precise I was in my precision. Got that guy stamped with an R, so that's R. Oh, come on, it's close. Oh, look at that, look at that. The power of fifth grade math. All I need is a compass and a caliper. Look at that. Okay, so I needed a little bit of a spacer on my bracket because the motor mount sits in a little ways on this side, so I should be able to pop this in. Right against the motor. Nice. Now I'll just bolt this tight and then I'll tack weld these rods to the frame. At that point I can trim trim there and the whole thing should bolt together. Okay, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing here on this tubing that I have going through the frame. Cut a piece of conduit that's a little bit larger. That's going to slide on right there. Kind of I've already got that one done. Now when I put this plate on the side, these should, yep, the holes will slide over the inner tube and the outer little shoulder there will hold it where it needs to be. Yep, and then once that's all said and done, I'll weld that little collar in there, take a cutoff wheel and grind this excess off. And yeah, should be able to just snap that on there, run a bolt through, and we got ourselves a back motor mount. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Well, there we go. We officially have a TRX 200 SX engine in the 1975 XL125. Jeez, beauty. That engine looks beefy in there. <laughs> oh man, this is so cool. Yeah. Pull start, fantastic. You know, I'm gonna love building this bike and I hope you're gonna enjoy watching the videos. But I've got a lot more work to do on this thing. I think the next thing I need to do is I need to build an intake that kind of just kicks off the side here a little bit because that carburetor is not going to fit in there. Okay, so what I did here is I made a custom intake. This is actually a fork off of an ATC 110. Yeah, had a perfect bend in it, made a couple flanges, welded it all together, and we've got ourselves an intake. Yeah, eventually I'll have to figure out some kind of air box here because I'm not going to have enough room back here for the stock air box. So a big old battery has to go in there for this big hog, but we'll figure that out soon. Well, folks, I think it's time for a test drive. I got my gas tank. I got my homemade motor mounts, my homemade intake. Got my foot peg. Got my seat, kind of. You know, if this thing gets through all five gears, it gets all the RPM, we're going to call this a success. And I can start tearing this thing down and get ready for some body work and paint. Let's go for a ride.
Well, that was fantastic. Yeah, motor mounts are nice and square. There were no weird chain noises or anything. It drove great. Handled quite nice, actually, for all things considered. But I think I'm going to need to find some stiffer springs in the fork because the rebound wasn't all that great with this heavier engine in there. But that's something I can fix at a later date. I think the next step here is to figure out how I want to mount the gas tank up there, seat pan, all those goodies. But that's definitely going to have to come on a later video because that's all the time I got for today. So in the meantime, if you need more Big Foot Bikes and Brews content, you can click on the video on the left or on the right. And I'll see you next time.